Hello, this is Akiko Sedano, and I'm stamping in the meadows, and let me check and see, make sure everything's doing okay. Okay, good, I think I'm all right. I got this nasty message that said, trying to reconnect, and I'm so, ah, no. Well, I'm live. And we're going to, I'm so excited about today because I am going to do a watercolor um, technique using uh, the new Grace's Garden stamp set. And, or actually, no, Grace's Garden has been um, in the annual catalog. And um, I'm going to use the, uh, uh, the, the watercolor with ink technique. And I haven't used that in a long time. I've been so... Um, enjoying using the Stampin' Blends that I haven't done the watercolor in a long time. And that's uh, just a fun thing. And it's it's good a good way to use up your inks. And, um, and then they have the new water pens and I wanna show you those as well. So this is the card that we're gonna be making today. Hi, Karen, thank you so much for joining me. This is the card that we're gonna be making today. And this card is also on page 87 of the uh, catalog. So I'm casing a card from the catalog and you can see it right here. And they go, all of these cards are done with uh, watercolor with the new water painters. And you can see the water painters right here. And so these are all different kinds of um, uh, things that you could you could try. So this, my card is just a little bit different, but it's this card that is in the catalog. And um, so um, if this is, this is gonna be fun. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. I first, the first thing that I want to talk about is with, um, I've already stamped um, a lot of the um, different images and I've already started to color some of them to speed things up a little bit. But the first thing is that, um, that you want to be careful of the paper that you use. You can't do this on plain whisper white paper. You have to use either a watercolor paper or the uh, shimmery white uh, paper. And for some reason, the shimmery white paper is treated a little bit differently so that it stands up. Hi, Chi. Hi, Kathy. Thank you so much for joining me. The um, the shimmery white paper can stand up to the um, the water. If you use the uh, regular cardstock, then what happens is that the water gets inside there and it starts to um, break up the uh, finish of the cardstock and your uh, you end up with like little uh, pills of uh, paper and uh, then the water doesn't apply the water the color doesn't apply evenly across your um, thing so you want to make sure you use either a watercolor paper or use the uh, shimmery white paper that's in the uh, the catalog and we're today we're using the shimmery white paper second thing that's important to you to know is to use a solvent based ink to stamp your uh, designs such as stays on ink um now there's a special cleaner for stays on ink and it does um, have a tendency to um, uh, not clean off especially the photopolymer stamps very well and you can see here how uh, these are, are I've, I've stamped these with the stays on ink and I've used the uh, solvent cleaner but it doesn't come off it doesn't come completely off. This doesn't hurt your stamps, um, and it's just more of a, an aesthetic kind of thing. So, but you need to use the stays on ink to stamp because it will um, resist the water as uh, you when you color it. If you use a regular dye-based ink, like the regular Stampin' Up! inks or Memento Tuxedo Black, then it will react with the water and it will run. So. That's, if that's not the effect that you're looking for, then um, you need to use a solvent-based ink where it won't interact with the, um, with, the, uh, with the water as you're coloring it. So let's go ahead and first, what we're going to do is we're going to do the background of the card. And basically, we're going to do a color wash of Pool Party and Old Olive inks. Here, I'm going to move everything else aside and I'm going to I don't know if I'm going to need this but I'm going to just bring another uh, piece of paper underneath here and these are the new um, 
the new uh, water painter brushes, and basically you fill, they, they, um, they unscrew, and you fill up the uh, channel back here with just regular tap water, and then they have little areas where you can where it says push and you can gently squeeze that and um have water come out now with uh the stampin up water uh you they come three in a pack and you you got this nice big fat um tip which is uh going to be nice for uh doing a color wash and this is the one that we're going to be using today and then we're going to use the uh the thin one for my samples i use the regular one for the color wash but i think that um uh, the uh, the fat one is the one that we're going to use today so i'm going to cover these other two up and uh put them aside and then the the the, uh, the 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 tiny one is the one that we're going to use for our uh, for our, our detail pa uh, painting, and um, there's then with the ink there's two different ways. The first way is to um, get the ink on. First way is to squeeze your ink pad, and I'm sure that you've seen uh, other people do this with their, um, so that you've got a little bit of ink right here. But for this project, especially with a pool party, I want to um, make sure I have plenty of pool party ink. So I'm going to take one of these uh, stamp pads, and these are one of these one these little square $1 cheapies that um, Michaels and, and, and um, Joann's have that, um, that I've uh, got a bunch of those that I used to always get. So I'm going to just put it on there and then we're going to start the color wash. And the first thing what we want that we want to do is we want to lay down some water and we're just uh brushing the the paper with the um with the um with the wide color brush and you can I don't know if you can see that there's some water that's already been uh that's that's laid down here. And then what happens is that the um And it seems to be drying pretty quickly. So I'm going to squeeze out some more. And you can see that the, the paper is curling. So I'll talk about how to uh, flatten the paper afterwards. Um, I went ahead and uh, die cut my, uh, my paper with the uh, stitched rectangles dies because that's, that's what I'm going to use. And I'm squeezing, I'm squeezing, this is, you can see this is where it says press and I'm squeezing to add more water to the, um, the, uh, the, the thing here so that I can just get a wash. And what, what happens is, especially with watercolor, which is the, the um, nice technique with watercolor, is that the water is on the, uh, you have water on the paper and then the water causes the, uh, the uh the color to move and it shifts and then that way each time you do something you get a different different kind of different effect different every every time you do it something it looks different and i'm squeezing to make sure because i i don't know if i i don't know how much first of all i need to say i am not an artist and so i am not uh an expert at um water coloring um, and so I just, everything is uh, kind of self-taught. But the nice thing about it is that if you have all of these right tools, anybody can do this because this is really, it, it's really, the, the, the water brush uh, makes it uh, really pretty easy. Now this is not very, I think I want a little bit more color. So I'm going to go in here. And remember when I squeezed out of here, I'm going to just pull some of this in here. And hopefully I don't get too dark a splotch and just kind of, just kind of do that. But you see how it kind of picks it up? And, and the thing about it is that if you don't put the water down before um, you put this, uh, put your paint down or your ink down, then you end up with um, bigger contrasts of uh, splotchiness. So, and then another thing to remember is that this is going to uh, dry fairly, um, it's going to dry lighter. It's going to be lighter as it dries. So I'm going to wipe this off and then I'm going to do the bottom part with the old olive and use basically the same thing. You can see I've wiped, um, you can see the, 
ink on the uh, paper towel there. So always when you're uh, doing uh, the thing with the water brush, you want to make sure you've got a paper towel on the side here. And again, I'm going to apply the old olive ink to the, the, uh, the block here so that I get some ink there. And I think that's probably going to be enough. And again, I'm doing the bottom ground part of the, uh, and I think I need to squeeze this some more. And sometimes you can, I don't know if you can see, I don't know if you saw the bubbles go up, but you can see that more water goes down there. And um, I want to get a little bit more, and more water in here. And then squeeze some more, squeeze it some more. And, and there we go. And hopefully this isn't too, yeah, okay, that's good. And I want to go about an inch of green um, there. I think that's good enough. That's good enough. So one of the things is when you're working with water um, and you, it, it, it's going to cause your paper to um, get curled and um, this sort of thing. One, one of the things that you can do is uh, at this point, if, if it's not fully dry, so I don't have a lot of water on this one, but sometimes you have a lot of, hi, Debbie, thank you for joining us. Um, sometimes you have a lot of like puddles of water on here, which that's good because that causes you to, your, um, you to have more interesting effects, but you can use your heat gun to dry it off if you want. And that causes even more, um, more warpage on your paper and stuff so one of the things that um, there's a couple of things that you can do um, and one of the things is that after it's completely dry I um, what I did with um, my um, other uh, samples that I uh, prepped for today is that I will take it and put it in between a piece of uh, printer paper fold the printer paper and put my um, uh, panel in between um, in it with in between the folded printer paper and then take it to an iron and uh, flatten it that way. And another thing that I've done is um, I'll take it and I'll with in, in between the printer paper and I'll put it underneath some heavy books to um, help to flatten it. And um, that will usually I'll have to leave it there for a couple of days uh, to or a, or just probably just a day, but leave it under there for uh, a good amount of time so that it it'll be flat it'll be flat so it doesn't always make it completely flat but it um, makes it uh, it helps to alleviate all of the um, the, uh, the the warping of the paper that you get with um, when you do the watercolor techniques um, and with the water with the uh, watercolor wash like we did for the background here it's going to be um, it, it's going to be a lot worse than what we're going to see with the um, with the uh, spotted uh, with the detailed uh, watercolor that we'll do with the um, the uh, stamped images. But I um, I I we did this one and I did one earlier and we'll actually use that one. But I'll put this aside to dry. And I don't think I'm going to need this pad anymore. And it this is still a little, this is did get a little bit damp. But um, I think it's uh, good enough to work on. So th that we can bring the uh, rest of our pieces here. And I've got all of these. Um, I've got the gate and then the two of the flowers. And what I did was I um, went ahead and I pre, so that um, you wouldn't have to watch me do everything. I pre-colored um, uh, some of these with... Um, with uh the with, with uh the the different color inks so let's first start with uh, the garden gate and i'm doing the garden gate with the cinnamon cider ink and you can see i had for my sample i had squeezed on that squeezing thing and i have some um ink in the bottom here so i can put this away but i want to make sure i have plenty of room 
and I'm going to, you want to be careful because that is, uh, that's dangerous because you've got the ink there. But we'll start with the garden gate and we will, um, uh, we will paint it. So with a, with a thin, with a thin water brush and I've got my paper towel here that I can use to, uh, to, to drop off. So what I'll just do is, and, and you can see how this is pretty dry and as I, um, Go around. Hopefully, you can see that it um, it makes um, it, it, it 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 deposits water there. And what I want to do is I want it to be darker on the bottom and then get lighter as it fades up. So I just brush it as it goes up, brush the thing, and then as um, as as it gets uh, as you use it longer, it uh, gets lighter in color and. Um, I, I want to pick up some of the dark areas right here because I want these uh, cross bars to be really dark. And, um, and this one's starting to get light. So I can also tell that I'm starting to get, I, I don't know if you can tell, but we're starting to get, th this brush seems to be um, puddling a lot more than the other brush was. And I guess each brush is going to be a little bit different. And you can also, if you've got your paper towel and you find that there's too much water, you can also just dab it to um, absorb some of the water. You want to just be careful that you don't um, get um, ink where you don't want it. And one of the uh, things that they always say about when you're doing watercoloring um, is to not, if you're going to do... Um, two different colors next to each other to uh, wait until the um, wait until the uh, water dries don't don't color two adjacent areas at the same time because then your ink is gonna smear and you're gonna end up with a muddy mess muddy mess because they'll they'll combine and um, and then they'll turn different colors that you don't want Okay, so now I'm going to I'm going to make the uh, bottom one just also a little bit darker, the bottom. And you can see here, this is where I started, and that's most intense in color. And then as I go on, it's um, I get more water from the water brush, and it makes it lighter. So we'll start from the other side, and. Um, And then we'll uh, do this little, this little ball and make it darker on the bottom and lighter as it goes on top. I love this cinnamon cider color. This is that new, one of the new in colors. And I just love that color. Let me see. Hi, Patricia. Thank you for, for joining me. And going to do the other post starting from the bottom and going up and so one of the things that we'll do is we'll also oh I want to get this little guy right here we uh we want to um we'll add some garden green to the bottom so that gives um this uh that was a little bit uh dark so if you feel like it's um if you feel like it's uh getting too dark then just bring the color bring the color into the, the um, area where you've got more water and um, and um, slosh it around or just add more water until you get um, kind of the, the the shade that you want and there we ended up with uh, a, a much much lighter color and this one this one I ended real close without mixing some of the water so you can mix the water in the um, in the, the top of your um, your ink thing and um, or on your little block and uh, and you can also and you can see I can you can push the water you can push the color down to where you want the most intense color. There. 
think that's that's good with the cinnamon side. So now we're we're gonna get ready to go to the um, the garden green. No, it's a granny apple green, not garden green. We're gonna go to the granny apple green um, ink and uh, do the grass on the bottom of the fence post there. So we'll co cover this up, but we squeeze out um, extra water uh, by pressing it by the push uh, little areas there and then we'll open up the granny apple green ink and we'll uh, get some and we're going to just put a little bit just on the sides here where there's grass and some down here. And I think that's done. So this piece is done. So we can put this aside and let this one dry. I'm gonna move this over. I'm gonna move this over right here. And then um, let's go ahead and finish this guy because I didn't. Because um, all of the um, the I use the old olive for the ground in the background, and all of the other leaves I've done in the same granny apple green. So we'll um, just do this now. This is the when you're doing these little places. That's where it, it, you you find that the water really it, it it sometimes it's really hard to control the amount of water that's coming out of the water brush. So you want to um, have your um, little thing where you can uh, dab it off and um, and put it on. But you just kind of play with things and. Um, and then figure out well what is it, it, it it's how much you want it to control the water um, and sometimes that can be a little hard but that's where uh, practicing and doing different things uh, doing uh, practicing will make it e a little easier give you more experience with things and stuff and again I stamped these um, using stays on ink and I stamped it on uh, the shimmery white cardstock and I went ahead and I used the coordinating dies to cut this cut these pieces out and I figured that would just save um, room and then we can focus on the um, getting the color down with the techniques of the watercoloring and um, then the uh, the actual card construction once everything is done and there's a, yeah, and that little thing right there. So this one is done. So let's um, do this next one. Let's color the leaves with uh, the granny apple green. So that's the color we're using. And it feels like thing. It, it feels like water's coming out a little too fast for me right there. And so I needed to wipe it off. And then sometimes you just feel like your uh, water, your color is getting too faded. So there's a couple of things. You can go over it after it dries. Um, you can always go over it because it's always going to end up drying a little bit whiter than, uh, than it looks when it's wet. And then you can uh, go over it with uh, more ink and um, more color or I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out my little um, little acrylic $1 pad. These pads are nice for doing this, but they're terrible for stamping because then you end up with ink all over your fingers because they're so short. I've got a couple of leaves up here I want to get. These are leaves too. Couldn't tell if that was a flower or if that was a leaf. It's, it's coming up pretty quickly. I think that one's 
Oh, what could I write here? I can write right here. Right here. There we go. And then let's get all the green on this piece. This piece we haven't um, colored at all. So basically what I'm using is the granny apple green for the ground, um, the grass, and the leaves. And then I'm using uh, uh, Highland Heather for the lavender flowers. And then I'll use uh, terracotta tile and bumblebee for the flowers on here. When you when you uh, you when you use the um, when you're just coloring like little um, places like this, it um, dries fairly quickly, and you don't end up with um, even if you have big block blobs of um, water, it, it's not um, all over, so you don't end up with as much warping, and you don't and it dries faster. It, 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 so that by the time we get ready to put our card together, these will be pretty much dry. So it's not too bad. Um, what else do we have? A leaf. I think, I think this might be a leaf. That could be either a leaf. Oh, there's some more on the side here. think that that's colored that's colored oh, I, I need to get a little bit more red on the bottom here yeah. that's good it, it and it doesn't with watercolor it doesn't have to be precise hi Amy Thanks for joining me. Thanks, everybody. Oh, Chris, you've joined, too. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining me. I really, really appreciate everybody who's um, who supports me by watching my videos and, um, and everything. So next thing, I'm going to color these little flowers, and I'm coloring those in the terracotta tile so that I have some pops of red. And again... You just need to um, use your uh, little little paper towel to uh, squeeze out the the color from the previous color, and you can switch over to the next color. It's not like you have to have a, a, a color a water jar. Just go blah blah, and the and it, it, it's pretty clean. And some and, and usually usually you don't get uh, a lot of uh, staining in the tips of your water brush, but it um, it doesn't affect anything. It doesn't affect your next color, so it's um, really pretty easy to use. Water, that's I think that's why um, the the using the using the technique of using ink pads with your with your as your coloring medium as opposed to watercolors it makes it really easy especially with the with the water brush and that's why i think people like this so much because you can do a lot with it and then we want actually i'm going to squeeze some more of this on here and again we just kind of squeeze it i always feel like i'm squeezing too hard and i'm going to break the um the um Pad. I don't know if anybody's ever done that, but um, that's good. Hi, Pam. Thank you. So, you, again, this is Bumblebee, and I'm going to color these flowers in Bumblebee. And that's a, it's fairly intense. That's good. And I'm just kind of smearing it in the, these areas so that it's all kind of a uh, yellow. And then I think everything else is good. Well, and if you feel like it, it's it, it's not dry enough, then you just just squeeze where it says push, and uh, 
do that and then we'll get the Highland Heather ink and uh, color up the last set of flowers here in Highland Heather. Oops, no, I don't want to do that. I'm gonna squeeze some ink onto the, the top. Did I get, oh, I got plenty, good, so. I uh, swish my brush around and then I have this this lighter color of, uh, of uh, purple and then if I go closer to the top there then I have darker shades of purple and uh, then I can bring the purple from where it's intense down to here where it's lighter and get any shade of purple that I want. And the nice thing when you have like lots of little flowers like this, it you got each one is going to have its own, each one is going to have its own shade. So you're going to have some that are really dark, some that are really light, which makes it interesting. mush up the top. I'm going to go all the way to the top, get these little things so that there's color up there. And that's not very, it's not big. It, it, definitely not coloring in the lines up there. But just add some color. There. And I think everything has been colored and it's dry. So I am going to put these aside and then let's start to assemble the card. So I've got three of the tall lavender ones and then two of these and then our garden gate. And then, so this is my color wash thing and you can see how it's um, just kind of, of uh, curled up and, 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 and warped like this. And this is why when um, it's important to know the uh, different techniques for straightening it. And this is one that I did previously. And you can see how each one, each time you do it, you're gonna get a, a different color of intensity and, and slightly different look. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put this down and then I'm gonna use the Stampin' Seal and um, put the uh, garden gate down. And I'm gonna put the garden gate flat against the on the um, the watercolored panel and I put it um, put it so that it's about a half an inch yeah I want to make sure I get plenty on this side so that this side stays flat goes flat down against it and that looks like it's maybe about three quarters of an inch from the bottom. And kind of in the center here. You know what, I forgot. I needed to put uh, this guy behind. Well, you know what, we're gonna ha have to put him in the front. It's okay. And again, I use the Stampin' Seal. And I'm gonna put him in front. Oh well, that's all right. And we'll, let's see here. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, put, um, put the, uh, the designer series paper behind it. And what we're going to do, because I want to do this while I still have it flat, because the other pieces are up adhered with dimensionals. So I'm going to put it kind of on a angle like this. And this is the, um, this is the other um, pull party designer series paper. This is one of the other patterns that is in, in a pack, and it's got um, that pattern on the back. And so I'm just going to Add some more Stampin' Seal to this, and then OK, 
okay? Now, one of the uh, differences in the um, in the sample that's in the um, catalog is that they put the um, the panels directly on uh, the cardstock. But what I've done is I've decided to take uh, uh, another panel of cardstock and embossed it with the tasteful textiles because the tasteful textile looks like it's a an art canvas. So I felt like with the watercolor and um, it would be nice to have an art canvas kind of background with it, like a, yeah. So I decided that I would, uh, it would kind of coordinate with the theme. So I'm going to put this on the front of the card, uh, just using a bunch of multi-purpose liquid glue and lining it up and then pressing it down Hi, Ross. Thanks for joining me. Okay, so that's down there. Good. Now I will put dimensionals on the back of here and then put that on the, um, on the card front. And especially with, uh, I think in the sample card, they had used... Uh, a contrasting color and I'm, I'm using pull party and the uh, pull party with everything and it um, it needs a little bit of shadow in order for the uh, pull party to really show up and we'll pull the cover off of the dimensionals don't know where the other there it is pull the cover off and put it kind of on the center. That's good. All right. So the next, uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to use dimensionals to put this, this guy right here. And we'll pop uh, one of these guys on with dimensionals right there. And Make the bottom make the bottom not really lined up with that, just a little bit higher than that. Um, and some of the leaves can go off the side here, and we can still see the top of the the, the fence post there. That's good. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the uh, the sentiment and stamp it on, and I'm going to just use uh, memento tuxedo black ink to um, stamp the sentiment. Get this nice and juicy. Yeah. This is such a sweet sentiment. Such a sweet sentiment. And Stamp it on my little tag. And this is such a tiny tag, but then what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, 
clip the bottom just to make a slight fishtail. Let's see here, best way. This is one and a quarter inch, so we want to do this right in the middle. And from this corner, go to the edge, and then from this corner, go to the edge of the cut there. And that's fairly, that's fairly, that's pretty good. And we'll add some more Stampin' Seal to the back of this. And put this on the top, make sure we can see our words. And then make sure we're straight. That's good. There. And then we want to add our terracotta tile little butterflies. We'll add two little ones and a big one. I'm seeing a lot of butterflies in my gardens these days. That's really, really nice. It's very cheerful. All right, and then we've got two more die cuts that uh, we colored, and we'll just adhere those to the bottom left corner of our card with uh, Stampin' Seal, put that in. And you can see everything. I'm smearing this, and everything is, is dry. So if, if with uh, with uh, when you're doing uh, those small areas, they dry pretty quickly. So you can uh, you can handle it. You can smear it, um, but you do want to you do want to check, double check to make sure. And then always, if if you feel like it's still um, uh, wet, um, you've got globs of water. Then uh, just um, use your paper towel to absorb it, to suck it up and dry it off a little bit. And put this on the inside of the card. This is your inside. There we go. And that's our, that's our finished card. Isn't that pretty? I just love it. I, I just love this uh, this uh, set, and it's uh, the uh, the watercolor technique is uh, it makes it is really pretty with this uh, with this uh, set. So, I hope you consider trying that, and I hope you have fun and enjoy it because it's really really pretty. And um, the new water painters from Stampin' Up are really nice. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you like this project, and I hope everybody has a great week, and we'll see you next weekend. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.